there's a hunger on the part of consumers for food that's produced by folks they know. It also tells me that there is a social desire for consumers to get together with these producers because one of the cool things about farmers markets is not just about going and buying food. It's about talking to the producer about how the food was raised. It's about uh, celebrating life and it's about socializing. And it was eye-opening to me as Ag Commissioner to see these sorts of things unfold even in very small towns across North Dakota. I mean, we had maybe four or five years before I uh, was no longer Ag Commissioner, we maybe had 10 or 12 farmers markets around the state. In just a period of four or five years, that number moved up to well over 50, close to 60 farmers markets that were established with regular places of doing business, regular hours. That's rapid growth. Three and a quarter of carrots. And a lot of young people who want to go into farming now and are going into farming all across the country are very smart. They're not afraid of complexity. And the important thing is that they're really not interested in raising corn and soybeans. They want to raise food for people. So you could begin to see some changes in communities where you have more community people working together to produce more of their own food from their own resources. And that food will be obviously local, and then people will know where it comes from. And you could see a whole new, different kind of community culture evolve out of that. I left the Bismarck Mandan area around the age of 20, and I left with a love for farming because I worked here on my uncle's farm. And I met a man who happened to be a farmer as well and have a love for farming and we decided to start a family. She had this idea, hey, there's this family land and it's not really being used by the family right now. Maybe we could lease it and so here we are. I was hoping there might be some strawberries. You know what, there's only a million billion. <laughs> Do you want a bag? CSAs are really wonderful and in my opinion they are the perfect marriage between consumers and farmers. But here's oh, some pimentos. I, I took your advice last time and like you said just eat them raw. Yeah. They are. It's like candy. Isn't it's it so amazing? Yeah. CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture. Here at Riverbound Farm our CSA members get to come out to the farm once a week for 17 weeks which is as long as our summer season was mid-June through mid-October and pick up whatever they want that's available for that week. And they can also do pick your own things. And one of the great things about CSAs is share the bounty, share the risk. As soon as we got here, there was like a whole group of people who were like, hey, we're so glad you're here. You know, we've been waiting for this. And so um, that's been nice. <laughs> and that, I mean, that's why North Dakota is a good place, I guess, for us. Um, also, North Dakota is an agricultural state, and there's a lot of people here who grew up on farms and now live in some sort of urban or suburban setting, and so are sort of separated from that, and they crave it. A small farmer who's marketing their goods through a CSA helps ensure themselves a customer base for the entire season. And as a consumer, you're ensuring yourself local, fresh, high quality food raised right here in your community by your neighbor. You're keeping your money in the community and you're ensuring your neighbor a good living. You can go out to the farm, you can shake hands with the farmer and you can be a part of that. And that's something that we are really trying to develop here at Riverbound Farm. We are inviting our members to be a part of the farm. Thanks guys. See ya. Farming now is really tough because a lot of the small farmers are older, retiring, their children don't want to farm, and so the farms are bought up by larger farmers and they're turned into, you know, crop farms. They're not diversified any longer. But we see our farm with the diversity showing our children that it's okay to do something different. And if they want to come back here and live, they don't necessarily have to do what we did. And it's okay, you know, they can come and turn it into a 
paintball arena if they want to, you know, if they want to live here and develop that. You know, we have three sons and none of them are real farmer orientated, but they like to be out here and they, their friends like to come out here. And so it's okay, you know, we give them permission by our example and just by conversation that if they want to live here, they can come here and live here and they don't have to do the traditional farming. I think there's a lot of potential for being food providers, uh, direct food providers. Even here in Langdon, people don't really think about it. And yet, we're able to provide a food source. I mean, it isn't a total food source, but at least a small niche to that food source. People are saying, well, gee, I'm really thankful that I got to know you because now I'm eating better because uh, I know where my food's coming from or I started my own garden now because of you guys or whatever. And I think that that is a certain sense of, of accomplishment. It's a process that you go through and you just hope that, you know, your kids will come and stay here or live here or some other young person that thinks it's cool here. Not necessarily your own kids, but your farm doesn't have to be huge to allow you to make a living. You can have a living, you may not make, you know, millions of dollars. You won't make millions of dollars, I can tell you that. But, you know, you'll have a good lifestyle. And that's, I think, what has been the most important thing for us in raising our kids and living here. It isn't just production that matters. You can have huge production of commodities and not have a good society. It takes people to make a good society. And the family farm system of agriculture produces a really good society. Focusing on that brings a bit of the focus back to the people and not just the statistics. North Dakota has a rural heritage. It's a rural state and there's a lot of farmers. And North Dakota farmers are doing a great job feeding the entire world. And it's something that we should really be proud of. Something that I think is out of balance is the small farmers in our communities. We can also do a really great job feeding ourselves and having our members of our state have access to farms again and get reacquainted with our food and where it comes from and feed ourselves again.